time to talk about the first film we actually took seriously. Captain America Begins the Second Half. Before I go into this review, let me catch up with a little bit of history. Before, me and my friends would always make all kinds of just short little films, like homemade film stuff. It wasn't really any structure at all. We just filmed whatever we felt like filming at the time. But this film was the first time we had a script. First time we had dialogue, a structure to go off of. So, my initial go with that for this film was to make a serious film and a big project. Not just some little thing we can film in like a day. This was something that was going to take at least a year to, to complete. With that, I wanted to take this a lot more seriously. I wanted it to be dark and I wanted it to be a grittier version of Captain America that you could believe is real. I like the idea of, of a superhero that's a soldier in World War II. I just, I thought that was interesting. I thought I could really take advantage of this. I can make it a war movie instead of a superhero movie and, and I could film it in that style. I took a lot of inspiration from Saving Private Ryan because I was watching that at the time and I really wanted it. I just, I, in my mind, I could picture Captain America on Amara Beach alongside all the soldiers and just, that's what I wanted to bring to life. To be honest, the only reason I called Captain America Begins in the first place was because Batman Begins. I wanted to go for that style and that tone, so I couldn't think of any other title but Captain America Begins. The overall plot of this film is that Captain America is at his wit's end. He's going down a dark place. The event on Amara Beach, it just messed him up in the head really bad. He witnessed all of his men dying alongside of him and he couldn't do anything to stop it. So that guilt just weighs upon him and keeps pushing him down. He starts getting drunk at bars and then he just keeps getting more and more depressed to the point where he wants to kill himself. And uh, But then his faith comes back. We catch up to Captain America once he's come to his senses because those are all in the flashbacks of the movie to present day, which is still at the end of World War II. He's captured by Flagface, this character I saw in an old comic book. First Captain America comic book I ever got. I said Flagface, so I chose him as the villain. Because I thought Red Skull was too mainstream at the time. So he's captured by Flagface. He's in this, like, kind of like concentration camp, but not really setting. It's like a prisoner camp for soldiers, pretty much. And uh, all these bad things happen. It's like the seven days of hell, pretty much, for him. And after the death of Bucky, his best friend, that's the breaking point for him. And then at that point, he realizes. He just gets so fed up with anger that he manages to escape. He manages to kill Flagface, run out of there, and finds out later the war is over. So the problems with this film, again, as I'm always going to say, it seems like the lighting just gets worse and worse the farther you go back in the night timeline of films. I mean, Fallout, it was it was okay, but it wasn't like... I mean, Project Spider-Man was bad too, so... But Cats America, definitely the worst lighting case scenario. Because you can't even see the faces most of the time. Sometimes you can't even see the body. It's just... It's hard to tell what's going on. Sound effects, I noticed in the beginning and on my beach scene, it really sound really muffled. Because back then I recorded them off my laptop instead of uh, actually downloading the music and sound effects. So the sound just sounds really off there. It doesn't really fit in the scene. There's no depth or anything. And I noticed, you can tell it's a loop because I kept repeating the same effect over and over and get that loop effect. It's just sound very convincing at all. I noticed in the war scene there's two emotional songs in there that just... You know, like I said before, if you have two-inch music changing back and forth in such a short length of time, it just seems unprofessional and amateurish. The second song worked. The first one I just ripped off the same pair of Ryan. The camera is way too shaky in the war scene. I mean, it was all over the place. You couldn't even tell what's going on. You know, a few still shots would just, it would have made the war scene so much better. The problem if you have the camera shaking around, the audience is trying to follow it and it just gives them a headache. I mean, you don't want that to happen. The story's not really apparent enough. I mean, I always see that. Back then, I just wasn't very good at the plot structures and whatnot. Just kind of a whole bunch of things happening with flashbacks that I thought were cool. The good things about this film, it, it, I definitely got the dark and gritty tone I wanted to accomplish. I think I achieved that. Pretty satisfied with it. Sometimes it's even too dark. The costume, I think, was exactly what I wanted. A different interpretation of the character. It's new, it's fresh, that's what I want. Like. My beach sequence, even though it had some problems with camera shaking and the dialogue, no dialogue and the sound effects are kind of poor, I still think it had potential to be really good because we, the fact that we filmed at a river instead of using instead of using green screen like most other people do. I've watched short films of Captain America on YouTube. Most people I can tell use green screen. The fact that we actually filmed on location, even though it wasn't really a beach, I still think that was pretty good. There's more stuff you can do in front of camera with that. Some of the music actually works pretty well. It was done in such a way where it just it fit right along with the story and it made you feel even more for the characters. Narration even works at times. I'm not as big of a fan of narration as I used to be, but in this film, it worked because he was capturing, he was kind of like, like a journal log almost. He was like day one hell, explaining his experience each day. And it made it go by faster instead of wasting a bunch of time. Problems during filming, I could say the war sequence 
but I feel like that'd be really predictable. I mean, yeah, the war scene was just hard to film. I was on my beach, I filmed on a river, everyone was getting all muddy and everything. No one liked it. To be honest, it was so long ago, I can barely even remember the problems, but I know there were a lot. But I, I could, the only problem I could really think of, besides the war scene, would be just getting the dialogue down and being able to um, say the dialogue in a serious manner, because <laughs> we were trying to hide our smiles all the time on set. So. That's the best way I can. The overall score I get for this film is a 4.5 because I still like it better than Fallout just because the story is a little bit more straightforward. It's easier, a little bit easier to understand. Um, it's a little bit simpler so it's not too kind of confusing even though it's still going to structure a little bit better. And the Amma Beach sequence we were really hard on that even though it could have been a lot better if we just would have had the camera still. Thanks for watching this review. Comment below and let me know how you feel because you helped me improve.